Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. I hope you like galaxies, because that's what's for dinner. Although it's not a perfect and accurate model, it may help you next time you will need a galaxy, if you ever do. This galaxy is made of four particle systems, a cylinder, with a volume material, two point lights, and a circle, used for one of the particle systems. So let's go ahead and see what it's all about. As we will use particles to generate our galaxy, we will need a force field to shape it. Add a vortex force field, and move it up. Here are the values to use this time. Also as we want our galaxy to appear instantly, we need to keyframe our vortex. Right click on the strength and flow, click on insert keyframe. Move from frame 1 to frame 2, keyframe the two values to 0, so nothing will move then. Personally, I had better results using two vortex. Duplicate, and move it up. Be careful, the upper the vortex are, the less it will influence the shape of the galaxy. Let's add our first particle emitter. Add a cylinder. Remove the cap ends. And scale it down, like this. Before we go on with particles, let's first add a new vertex group, allowing us to shape the galaxy a little better later. To create a new vertex group, move into weight paint mode, and paint some areas. The red parts are where some particles will come out. Change the strength to 1, to go faster. This has its role on how the galaxy will look like. 4 red parts, means 4 harms. You can move from object mode to weight paint mode by pressing Ctrl tab. Now we are ready to add our first wave of stars. Add a new particle system. You can see that the emission starts at a negative value, and stops to zero. So you don't have to wait this amount of time to see the result. It appears instantly. I used 700 particles, starts at minus 280, stops to zero, and a random long lifetime. The particles should not move. That's why you need to keyframe the damp value. Just like before. 0 to frame 1, 1 to frame 2. Then we need to add children to our particles, to multiply the number of stars. I choose 200 for the render. Finally, set the gravity down to 0. So the result is a nice flat object. This is what you should have, for now. If you click on bake, or move by a few frames. Thanks to the damp keyframes, the particles are being stopped. They will now stay static. Here is an example. If I increase the amount of damping, my particles will stop moving. But the newborn particles also stop. That's why you need keyframes. Wait until your particles are in position, then stop them. In my case, my particles start way before the first frame are in position at frame 1, and stopped at frame 2. Now, add a new material, select Halo, and check the shaded box. And reduce the size of the stars to a very little value. Here 0 0.009. To color the stars, add a new blend texture. Going from blue, to rose, to white. Select spherical as a type of blend. Also map it to an object and select your cylinder. Finally, set the size to a very low value, 0.01. As it seems it is the only thing working in this case. Now, when rendered this is what it should look like, with a black background. You can see the blend texture going from the inside to the outside. Note that depending on your computer, 
you may face some processing issues. Don't forget that you can deactivate particles by clicking here. If it becomes too strong for the computer, Now let's add a new particle system, a little more shaped. This time we will need 10,000 unique particles. Again, keyframe the damping. Don't forget to select material too, as we don't want the same than the previous stars. Set the gravity to zero. Into the vertex groups panel, select the group we created earlier. This is what it should look like. But what I know is that you probably have this result. It took me time to find out why I could not get the same result. But here is the reason why. As you can see the red parts are a little weird. Why? Well if I choose to display the normals, basically the side where the faces are pointing at, you can see that this is a real mess, and my faces are pointing randomly to the inside or the outside. The normals affect the directions of the particles, if a face points to the inside, its particles are emitted to the inside. You can change the normals in the Mesh Tools panel. Face by face if you want. If you want to see this a little better, this is how the particles should be emitted from these faces. And let's see my particles in action. As you can see some are going to the inside, other to the outside. What if I recalculate the normals? I will probably have the same result than you do. But I will keep mine, so know that if you want to give more depth to your galaxy you can change some normals. So, let's add a new material, for these stars. Just like before. Halo, and little size. Add again a spherical blend texture, the same way. Also map it to an object and select your cylinder. Set the size to 0 0.01. This is now what it should look like. This is what you see here. We will now give arms to the galaxy. But first we will need a new point light to light it. Don't forget to set it as a sphere. Now, let's move to another layer. And add a circle, like this one. This will be the model of our next particles. Add a new material to it. And set it to be transparent. We want to generate some kind of smoke. Also tap to edit mode and press U to unwrap. Add a new blend texture, spherical. Set the mapping to UV, and set it to be a stencil. Just like a mask for the next texture. Don't forget to set the transfer mode to add. The next texture is a cloud, with some sort of yellow arcs from the color band. Decrease the color and alpha a little. The last texture is a new spherical blend, that will be used to boost the light later. Map to an object, just like before. Also select the emit box, we will use it for the compositing. In order to avoid flatness, we need this circle to always face the camera. Add a track to constraint. And select the camera. Also move it away from the scene. Go back to the first layer and add a new particle system. Deactivate any rotation from the rotation panel. 
as the track to constraint shall define where our particles will point at. Keep frame the damp value, and add children's, this way. Also set the gravity down to zero, as well as the influence of the vortex to 0.7. Add also the vertex group to the density. Now, before we select our circle as particles, and to avoid processing issue, change the rendered button, by the cross one, so it won't display our big amount of flying faces, but replace it by these cross in the 3D view. Now you can choose object and select the circle we just modeled, as well as the rotation, given by the track to constraint, so each particle will face the camera. This is what it should look like when rendered. So now, each particle is a circle we just modeled. Adding thousands of stars is not enough, when you know that a galaxy has hundreds of billion of them. To compensate we will need a model. In another layer add a new cylinder, and shape it just to fit a little more than the star field. This is what's good. As you can see, my stars are trapped inside. From the transparency, the cylinder will affect the look of the third particle system, creating some sort of nebula. To achieve this, add a new material to it. And select volume, and shadowed. To color hit accurately, add a new point light. Don't forget to make it a sphere, and deactivate specular. Also to have something clearer, I recommend you to change the display type to wire. This is what it should look like if you render everything. Let's color this. Select the point light, add a new spherical blend texture to it. Targeting the same color than before. Map you to an object, and choose your point light. So the texture will color the halo thanks to this point light. This is the render. To finish this model, we will add a colored core. In a other layer, add a new cylinder, bigger than before and less faces. 8 is enough. And move it away from the center a little. Add a new particle system. Keep frame the damp value. Display it as axes if you want. And add some children. Set the gravity to 0 0.005, so that the shape is a little different. Add a new material. Set the size to 0 0.1 and select texture. Add a new spherical blend texture. Changing from alpha zero, to rose, to blue, to white. And change the mapping to object again. Finally add a new spherical blend texture, we will use to influence the color in alpha. So let's see what it looks like. I know it has nothing to do with at this scale, but this is what inspired me at this point. Unless palm tree galaxies inspire you, move this to the first layer, so the force fields will affect these particles as well. You are now ready to bake it all if not done yet. This is our render, for now. The last thing to do now is to give our galaxy the power of light. Before we move on to the compositing, Select the emit pass to appear into the compositor. Render again, and let's move to the compositor. Node editor. At the bottom of the window switch to composite, and select backdrop. Add a viewer. Link it to the emit pass. This is in fact the third blend texture we gave to the circle or the galaxy arms if you prefer. Add a gamma node, and set it to 0.2. Add a blur node. With the X and Y value to 6. And select Gaussian. 
You can also select the gamma box. Add again a new blur. Gaussian and high values this time. 50 and 30. This will give a nice light effect. Mix the two blurs thanks to a mix node, set to add. This give an effect of lighting core. Add a new glare node. Fog glow. Low. Size to 9. Threshold to 0. Add a new glare node. Fog glow. Low. Threshold to 0. Size to 9. Link it to the image. Then mix everything with a new mix node, set to add. It's still not satisfying to me. Let's go ahead and keep on adding light power. I will mix again the image with the light. But before I will add a new glare node. Fog glow. Hi. Mix to 0 0.4. Threshold to 0. We can finally link our last nodes. And never forget to link also the composite node. If you don't want your brain to explode when you realize your long time render is over and you forgot to do this leaving you with a blank video. So, this is the end of this tutorial, I hope it wasn't too fast and it will help you. Thank you for watching. And bye. My planet needs me.